So we'll start with solar radiation. And this is a natural starting point since all the energy, almost, that is received by the Earth's surface comes from the Sun. Now, let's think a little more about what this means. What do physicists mean when they talk about energy? Energy is measured in what we call joule. And as you might expect, the joule is named after an old British guy with a big beard. Here is our friend James Prescott Joule. So what is a joule? Well, JP Joule defined the joule to be exactly the energy transferred onto an object that is being pushed with a force of one newton by one meter distance. So one joule is exactly one newton meter. That is the definition of the unit of energy. And, and the joule is part of the international system of units, also known as SI units. And that's maybe confusing, but it's SI units because it's abbreviated from the French. System international. Anyways, this was just a side note, because in this class we're less interested in the absolute value of the energy received, but rather we want to know how much the Earth receives from the Sun per unit time and per unit area. That is to say, if you consider one square meter of area on the surface of the Earth, we would like to know how much energy does this square meter receive in one second? And that's what we call the radiative forcing. And this is measured in watts per meter squared. And you might expect that watts are named after another old white guy with a big beard, but in fact James Watt lived in a time where you had long hair, but not necessarily a beard. So what is a Watt? Abbreviated by capital W. A Watt is the unit of power. And power is energy per unit time. In SI units, a watt is given in joule per second. So radiative forcing is measured in joule per second per meter squared. So now that we understand what radiative forcing means, we can ask the question, how much radiative forcing does the surface of the Earth receive? So here's our planet.
And the big question is, at the surface, how much energy does come in and where does it come from? And we're asking this question in each square meter, how many joules per second does that get? So how many watts per meter squared on average is coming in? So first, as I've already indicated, we have the energy of the sun. And the energy of the sun provides on average per meter squared 240 watt. The next biggest contribution is due to the thermal energy that is emitted by the hot core of the earth and this is known as geothermal energy. How to best illustrate that? Let's think of our earth and the core is on the inside and it is hot and it is radiating heat to the surface of the earth and it is radiating so much that the earth surface receives about 0 0.06 watt per meter squared. The next biggest contribution is due to, as you might expect, radiative forcing from humans burning fossil fuels through factories and planes and cars. And this anthropogenic forcing drives a direct radiative component of 0 0.02 watts per meter squared. So you'll see that everything else apart from the sun is basically negligible. And that might be surprising because maybe you expected that anthropogenic forcing is much larger and don't be fooled, it does contribute a lot to the energy imbalance that leads to global warming. But it does so by altering the composition of the atmosphere and changing how much of the energy provided by the sun is reflected back to the Earth's surface. It is not the heating of the human activity in itself that is driving global warming.